This video will be about key macroeconomic indicators. So where do we start when we assess the value or healthiness or growth of an economy? We'll review today five key families of macro indicators. And it is very important to start from GDP and GDP growth. When we need to assess if a country is developing and growing well, we look at GDP numbers and the trend is more important than the single growth number. Is the country improving? Is the GDP expanding? And which are the reasons behind it? You can see in this slide, what is the formula behind GDP? GDP is a sum of a number of complex, but in reality, simple, single items. We have consumption, we have business investments from the private sector and corporates typically, we have public spending, and then we have the sum of exports minus imports. If the overall GDP growth or trend is important to observe, it's also very important to assess the single factors of this formula. How healthy are families and how much are they spending or saving? And this is why we are looking at consumption patterns. How confident are companies into an economy? How much money are they spending or investing? How competitive is that economy is also very important to assess. How much money is the government spending? And also what is the balance between exports and imports? So this is the first set of indicators that we observe. A second one are monetary indicators. You will see details in a different video, but let me mention interest rates and also producer and consumer price indices, which is basically measures of inflation. Very important to observe. Then we have labor indicators. You know, how healthy is an employment market in a country? So we look at unemployment rates and all the derivatives of these measures, but we also look at unit labor costs. How competitive is labor in a certain country? Will this country attract investments because it's convenient to employ labor or not? A fourth range of indicators, which is very important to assess the momentum of an economy, is cyclical indicators. So we tend to look at PMI indices, the opinion of experts on future expansion of or contraction of certain sectors or the manufacturing or services sectors per se. We tend to look at industrial production, business confidence, and even consumer confidence to see if we can expect growth in investments or in consumption. Finally, the last important family that we look at, current account. So current account is probably the more complex uh, of these measures, and it is part together with the financial or capital account of the balance of payment of a country. It is a very important indicator of the healthiness of an economy. So a definition first, the current account is the sum of the trade balance, which is the biggest part, is goods and services exports minus imports, plus net transfers between countries, plus the net income from foreign activities. When we have a surplus or a current account surplus, it means that the country is a net lender to the world. When we have a deficit, the country under analysis is a net borrower with the world. In other words, if there's a surplus, we'll see the country's foreign assets value increase. If we have a deficit, the country's net foreign assets will decrease or are shrinking. It's very important to assess for developed and emerging market economies. These are five key families of macroeconomic indicators that we use to assess how is positioned a certain economy. Thank you.